Hey, this is a match once again with the best of videos of the paid request this time for Yuko. Thank you so much for that. For those interested in requesting any type of videos, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And Yuko wanted me to review Hardcore Never Dies. Which is hard to find because there's not a lot that you can find in the U.S. that's subtitled. It took a bit, but I was able to find it. It technically is on YouTube, and there is subtitles, but they, you have to switch it on, and they go by so quick. Kind of harder to read it that quickly. And I couldn't find a dubbed version if there was one. But it came out, I guess, around 2023. And I guess it's about the hardcore scene, which I didn't know what that was. And I had to look that up a bit. Apparently, in Rotterdam, well, this takes place in Rotterdam, but... That area, especially in the 90s, which this does play, take place in the 90s, there's a lot of raving going on. This underground circuit, anti-establishment, where the guys would mostly shave their heads. A lot of them would dress in similar fashion, and they would go to warehouses or tunnels and have this hardcore techno music and dance. And there was some drug usage. But it's more about dancing and being free and, you know, enjoying their lives. But I gotta be honest, watching the film, I did not give much more hindsight into that culture. What I described is really the most I got out of this movie in terms of that culture. Because it's... With the way it's called Hardcore Never Dies, it makes it seem it's going to be a lot more about that. I would say that's more in the background. It's more of just your typical drug story. Where it's about two brothers. One is the good brother, and he wants to study, and he's playing the piano. He's living with his mom and dad. The other brother has a shaved head. He's part of the, the dabber culture, as they call it. And Michael, the pianist, and I forget who the other brother's name. How the hell did I forget his damn name? God, my mind is out of it. Can't believe I forgot his damn name. How the hell did I forget his name? Is it Danny? Yeah, Danny. Michael and Danny. So Michael beats up with his brother Danny. And Danny brings him into the circuit. And shows him the scene. And the more he sees it. The more he gets gun ho about it. Falls into the drugs. Shaving the head. Dancing. The whole scene. They definitely play a bit of to the 90's. Because one of the first times he enters his brother's domicile. Is... There's someone playing a light gun. There's a poster of Pulp Fiction on the wall. People wearing Nike shirts with the swooshes. Definitely trying to stream 90s there. And some of the rave scenes, they're shot well enough with the lighting, the color scheme. The acting, I didn't think, was an issue. The people pl play both Michael and Danny. I think Danny, the rougher more hardcore brother and Michael the guy being seduced into this world. Some of the music, like the rave montage and their version of In the Halls of the Mountain. I didn't mind that. <coughs> but I wasn't really big on it because the story just felt very generic. Been there, done that, generic. That I really don't feel like it did too much differently. That sets itself apart from a variety of other movies. Not to mention there's other movies of either the punk style. Well, not, this is not punk, but. Or movies that take place over there. That deals with trying to either pick yourself up. Because you're in this world. That you see that there's not much future into this world. And because there's not much future in this world, either you don't go to the grave or you gotta steep and try to make it out of it to make a make something more of yourself. 
and that's really what happens either <laughs> and I'm like there was a film I reviewed called La Haine about the Paris suburbs that's in black and white I would say I like that more than this because of the the cinematography the way it was filmed is such a low budget it seemed much more impressive this film's like train spotting hell this film's like SLC punch with Mike, Matthew Lillard where it was the hardcore but it was the punch scene and kind of realizing that this life is not going to lead much to it and you know that one scene when Matthew Lillard finds his friend and Matthew Lillard breaks down and he's saying lines like I wasn't ready for this it's so heartbreaking and emotional I didn't feel any of that in this it becomes sort of your typical drug story where one's trying to move these drugs and they mess with the wrong people and then the bro's like well we could take care of these guys but then it doesn't really take care of the guys and then they make a run for it and then spoiler the ending I'll just spoil the ending they're in a rave they run out they're in the woods some people are just trying to find them by this point Michael's father has ticked them out their father's ticked them out so he doesn't really have anywhere to go he has showcased before you know a few seasons before that this is not the right way to go and him and his brother have a bit of a tussle that before all this is happening so when they're in the woods and the brother tells him I'll take care of this you run then the sound kind of drowns out I think the last thing you hear is someone telling the other brother get on your knees but the other brother the Michael he's running and he's hitchhiking he gets on the bus he gets to playing the piano again you get the idea that maybe he still goes out and raves but he's gonna play the piano I don't know cause it shows him playing the piano then it shows him raving so I honestly don't know where the hell he's going the other brother, I don't know if he died or not. You have a bunch of guys with guns. The last thing you hear is get on your knees. The guy's not Superman, so I'm guessing he died. I'm guessing. It's just a very generic coming of age drug story. That. If you want to know more about hardcore, I'm sure there are documentaries you could see the showcases that a lot more the characters kind of in one ear out the other for me because I've seen this done so many times you know the the brother that gets their other brother into if it's not their brother then their friend like kiss of death where Michael Rapport did brings David Caruso in when he doesn't want to and then all the upheaval that happens with him and his life gets turned around upside down topsy-turvy I read up some reviews some people liked it but some people didn't they said it concentrated too much on the drug usage and too much on the negative aspects and that it didn't really showcase much of the positive aspects a lot of people had during that time frame of being in the hardcore scene some say it is a good representation, some say it isn't a good representation, I don't know. Because I'm so far off or left field on that whole scene, I don't know jack shit about it. But the way this movie plays out makes me not really care to find out more about it. And honestly, it makes me go, what was so special? You shave your head and you dance. What else was special about it? If there was something more special, I don't think the movie really showcases that. Again, kind of the, you're being influenced. God, again, guy gets kicked out of the house. Falls into heavier situations with these drug guys. We got to take care of it. Things don't go well. I'll take care of it. I'm in overhead. I don't try to get you to safety. Maybe the guy dies off screen. I'm assuming he does. To me, there just wasn't much to the movie to talk about. 
Like, yeah, I got more out of that with SLC Punk and Train Spot and Lehane and a variety of other movies about that. You want to talk about the horrors of drugs? Don't see Requiem for a Dream. You want to talk about, you know, movies to the showcase how they get the hell out of the situation to find a better life? Hell, there are cons consistent amount of movies about that. It wasn't exactly, but hell, the other day I saw South Central about a guy who's part of a game and he went to jail and they want to be a better He's, he learned how to be a better person. He wants to inject that into his son. That I got much more out of. South Central. It just... Didn't do much for me. And didn't do much original or unique. Or for me to... Mention anything about it. The hardcore scene seemed kind of the, a backdrop. And not the main focus. Which the title. The poster. Kind of makes it seem to be the other way around. So, yeah, this wasn't for me. Uh, I'm sorry to Yuko. I, I know he enjoyed it. I honestly thought a lot of the film was really boring. Really tedious, really boring. In all those films I mentioned, I'd much rather watch and much rather prefer it over this. That's just me, though. But if you like the film, teach their own. Just not for me. But with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye for now.